often get asked by people, how do I take my motorbike when I go caravanning? And the answer is simple, like this, in the back of my double cab pickup. The next thing people will ask me is, how do I get it up, <laughs> madam? And also, surely the load bed in a double cab pickup isn't long enough for a motorbike. Well, this video is to show you how I do it. Right, before we start, just a little disclaimer. This is how I do it. There are risks involved. There is a risk of damaging your bike if you drop it. There's a risk of damaging your truck, as I have done, I'll show you later. There's a risk of damaging yourself if you get trapped under the bike, you slip or something like that. And finally, you need to check your own local laws because you will be driving with the tailgate down on the truck. Therefore, you need to check if you need a reflector or a lighting board and how visible your registration plate is. So speaking of the tailgate, we're going to look at that now. So a chat about the tailgate, this is a Nissan Navara, or Frontiera, as sold in North America. And the problem I've had is that I cannot anywhere, have, or I have not been able to get a straight answer from Nissan about what the maximum load on this tailgate is. I think it's about 100 kilos. Doesn't stop the marketing people showing you pictures of quad bites in the back of these trucks. How they get them in there, they must crane them in there because this can probably only take about 100 kilos. As such, this is my second Navara and you can see here already on this one, this is a year old, some crumpling to the side of the tailgate. Now I've had made up this metal plate that slides out, I'll show you that in a moment, to try and take some of the weight off the tailgate and it works to an effect but you can see even with this slide out metal plate there's still a little bit of creasing here. On my old Navara I tried the, went down the welding route, we had all this welded reinforced, the hinges reinforced and all that happens is the next weakest point will start to bend so it would have ended up that I would have had a tailgate weighing about half a tonne with a ton of plating and reinforcement inside it, so that doesn't work. Um, so that's what I use, this slide out platform I'll show you to try and take some of the weight off the tailgate. Right, so I want to talk about this sliding metal plate in the floor. First of all, you'll notice I mentioned damage to the car. This is damage to the tailgate I did by the jockey wheel on the caravan when I was towing it with the tailgate down. I was reversing into a pitch and the jockey wheel hit the tailgate there. So I need a new tailgate. So that's what I mean about you can damage your car. But now I have a removable jockey wheel on the caravan, which we'll go into later. But talking about the metal plate, you can see that this attaches into these rails in the floor here. This is a D40 Navara, one of the most recent sort, but not the latest one. The latest one, the NP400, I haven't seen them with these rails in the floor. So this really only applies to the D40 Navara and Frontiera. I had this plate made up by a guy called Rich, an engineer up in Newcastle, who's a Navara fan. Thank you, Rich. I'm useless at things like that. And the main challenge we had was to get the bolts the right length because you have these protrusions here in the floor. So if the bolts are too long, they're going to hit those and bend, give you all sorts of grief. If they're too short, of course, they won't engage in the nuts in the rail. So anyway, I'll slide it out now and start loading the bike up. Next up, I'd like to talk about the ramps. These are from therampeople.co.uk. I paid full price for them. I have no connection with that company other than a very satisfied customer, great customer service and super product. They're foldable because obviously you need to be able to carry them so you can use them the other end. Um, I have two, one for the bike, one for me to walk up next to the bike. They do all different kinds of ramps. I tried with one to start with and it was just way too dangerous to try and use steps next to it. So I have two. And the main thing is, when using ramps, is to make sure they don't slide. These, I've got little bolts in the end that Rich put in, that just fall into holes in the plate there. If you're not using a plate, then obviously you need to make sure that they're ratcheted down so tight that they won't be able to slide. Sliding is your enemy. So these are the ramps, and now I'll hook them up and then we get the bike on. Just three more things and then I really will get on with it. First of all, it must be dry when you're doing this. 
You may notice at the start of the video it was a grey day and that was yesterday because after I started filming it started raining which basically it was game over. I was gonna pack up yesterday, I couldn't because it rained. That makes everything slippery, way too dangerous to do it. So wait till it's sunny and dry. Also you may notice I'm just a little bit overdressed for the weather. I'm sweating like an MP at confessional. But the main thing is to wear decent boots, not trainers, not flip-flops, definitely. Decent boots, decent soles for walking up the ramp. And finally, if you have someone to help you, obviously the more people to help you, the better. I don't have any friends, so I've got to do this on my own. So here it is in the van now. Um, you just see I've put a chock under the front wheel just to stop it sliding back just in case. And a piece of wood there was on standby to put the stand on. So now it's just a question of manhandling that and strapping it down and putting the ramps in. And so I just wanted to mention once again about that metal plate. That really is just to take the weight off the tailgate and spread it through the truck because the bike itself is about 200 and something kilos about 230 and I weigh 75 so there's over 300 kilos at any one point so that means that between us we weigh over 300 kilos now obviously you try not to put all of that on the tailgate at the same time but sometimes it's unavoidable the main thing is just not dropping anything and there you have it, there is the bike in. Now you can see it's kind of slewed at 45 degrees. That's just to get it as far forward as possible to get as much weight as I can off the tailgate. And that now explains why the tailgate is off centre. All securely strapped down, obviously, once you're on the road, you'd stop after a few minutes to check the straps are still secure. And finally, just see, I've also removed the cover there of the armadillo to give me just a few extra inches. Now finally I'm just going to move on to the modifications I've made to the front of the caravan to be able to hitch up when you are like this. Okay finally to go through the front of the caravan. Um, now the bike is safely secured, the ramps are strapped down, I can actually change it to something a bit more comfortable. It's a very busy Saturday around here so sorry about all the planes and the bells and the cars going past but if I waited for all that we're waiting for a long time. Two main modifications here. Number one, I've changed the hitch head from the stabiliser type to just a normal non-stabiliser because with the big stabiliser handles you won't be able to lift it when you are coupled up with the tailgate down. So though, if that gives you stability problems or worries, shouldn't give you problems, um, you can always fit a blade type stabiliser like a Scott. I was going to do that until I tried towing without the stabiliser and it was so smooth, so stable that it's just not been worth it. And then with the jockey wheel, I have this removable jockey wheel. You need to have it close to hand when you're hitched up in case when you're on the road, if something happens with the van, you need to detach it very quickly. So just a couple of bolts here, the jockey wheel comes off when it's hitched up and that means when you're reversing into a pitch or something like that, you can do that without doing the damage to your car what I've already done so I've now had this change to a removable jockey wheel and now I'll get the tailgate done. That's my video then about carrying your motorbike in your pickup truck. I basically live like this and I'm hoping to do a few more videos now about how I live in my Airstream. I've got some already on my channel about touring the Outer Hebrides, mainly caravan related but a little bit of biking so if that floats your boat, then please subscribe, have a look, and in the meantime, 
thanks for watching and see you again soon. Cheers.